Last minute Christmas shopping is a tradition, but this year I can't wait to get to the shops and buy myself a present, because this year it's the second coming of an icon of the 1980s British home computer era. The Spectrum by Retro Games is a recreation of one of the most loved 8-bit computers in the UK, the Sinclair ZX Spectrum. Back in the day it was cheap, small and came in a pretty black case with a rubber keyboard labelled with all sorts of functions that promised a gateway into fun computing without being intimidating. Its predecessor, the ZX81, was even smaller and cheaper. People joked that it made a great doorstop. Very funny. It was available as a kit for electronics enthusiasts, already built for a little more cash. Hobbyists loved it, but for normal people the question was, what's it for? Then, as games were developed, it slowly started to break into the mainstream. The ZX81 had no colour or sound, but it set the foundations for the Spectrum. The ZX Spectrum sold really well in the UK, and spawned a generation of talented programmers and zany games. The Speccy always had a wacky Monty Python-esque side to it, probably inspired by Clive Sinclair himself, an inventor and a personality. The Retro Game Spectrum is of course an ARM-based emulator rather than an 8-bit Z80, so it's very different on the inside, but on the outside it's very similar to the original, certainly from the front. The case is the same size and shape, and the keyboard looks exactly the same to me. It even weighs more or less the same as the original. The decals are a little different though. It says Retro rather than Sinclair, and there's no mention of ZX. The keyboard itself feels the same as the original too. That's good and bad. Good because you get that authentic feel. Bad because it was never a good keyboard to use for actual typing. But who cares about that? The main thing is that it brings back the sensation you got back in 1982. At the back, the original has an edge connector for hardware expansion and sockets for power, a tape deck and to connect to your telly. The new Spectrum has four USB ports for joysticks, game controllers, keyboard, memory sticks, etc. There's an HDMI video output which is marked as TV just like the UHF output on the original and it also supports the ULA Plus extended graphics palette. You've also got a home button, a power button and a USB power input, but only the cable is supplied. Most modern power adapters will be considerably smaller than the Sinclair original. If you've experienced any other retro games products, or seen any of my videos on them, you'll know the score. Easy to set up, no messing with tuning your telly or loading from tapes. You get 48 games on a carousel menu, which gives you a nice description and useful control help. You can also load your own game images from Memory Stick and the instructions on how to do that are on the excellent downloadable user guide that's available from the Retro Games website. As far as included instructions are concerned, you just get a starter leaflet printed in a similar style to the original ZX Spectrum introduction guide and that gets you up and running. One thing you don't get included is any sort of external controller or joystick. That's consistent with the packaging of the original, but unusual for retro games products in general. You do get this special edition of Crash magazine. Back in the day, computer mags from the newsagent were a big deal. You had the general Your Computer and the more game-centric computer and video games, and then platform-focused mags like Crash. This special half-size edition has some nice game reviews and articles remembering the Spectrum of old and describing the modern Spectrum scene. It doesn't take very long to set up the Spectrum and you soon get to the game carousel. One thing you might notice is that some games that you might expect to see are not there. For example, ultimate classics like Jetpack and Attic Attack. My understanding is that they're not classed as distributable, so they're not public domain or abandonware. But there are enough great games included like Ant Attack, Football Manager, The Hobbit, Manic Miner and of course Horace Goes Skiing. If you're a fan of shooters, then the Spectrum has a few good options too. And platformers were always big on the Spectrum, and they're well represented here. For something completely different, Tenetra is a surprisingly addictive puzzle game. 
and there are newer titles that use the Nirvana graphics engine to reduce the color clash problem Spectrum's had and take advantage of the modern ULA Plus extended color palette as long as you've selected that setting in display options. As with the 400 Retro Games Atari 8-bit recreation, you can save your game state in one of the four slots per game and rewind gameplay up to 40 seconds. I find it a bit tricky to do if I'm focused on the game, but it's still a really nice feature. You can also run in classic mode, which means it starts up like an original ZX Spectrum, either 48K or 128K, and you can program in basic and use virtual cassettes. This really does feel like the real thing now. But you still don't quite get the full excitement of loading games from a physical tape cassette, of waiting 3 to 5 minutes without knowing if it'll work or if your cassette deck will chew up the tape. For that thrill, you'll need the real thing. If you do want an original ZX Spectrum, and you also want HDMI video, ULA Plus graphics, a joystick port and the ability to load from modern media, you're going to need to pay out for some extra kit to hang out at the back of your Speccy, which soon adds up. So, unless you're really keen on having the Sinclair original, or you happen to have one in the loft, the Retro Games alternative might be just the ticket. If you want to know more about the history of the ZX Spectrum, and how to get the most out of it today, I've got two other videos you might like. We've seen a few attempts to resurrect the ZX Spectrum over the years, the ZX Vega, the Spectrum Recreated, various Pico Spectrum clones, and the more advanced and expensive Spectrum Next. To me, the retro game Spectrum feels like the closest to having the original without the downsides. There's real attention to detail. Even the box looks like the original and helpfully tells you that it contains a personal computer. If you had a ZX Spectrum as a kid, or if, like me, your friend had one, or if you just know of the legend, then the Spectrum is worth trying. Of course, if you've been brought up on PlayStation, you might just not get it at all. The Spectrum always had a quirky side to it, but most people who remember it do so fondly. And I'm really pleased that Retro Games have honoured Sir Clive's most loved creation. But please, if you do have an original, keep it safe. I'd hate them to all disappear now the Spectrum has arrived. I hope you enjoyed the video because I had a lot of fun making it. Thanks for watching. Cheers!